They confirmed last night that those meters have no value. Uh, the second thing that they confirmed is that we have iPhones. I'm using this Ansel. This was Ansel's line. We have iPhones, but we're only using them to make phone calls. So we bought iPhones, but we're only using them to make phone calls. Those meters have capabilities that we are not using, and we need to have education what those meters can do, because they can do all kinds of things from things like uh, if you want to validate parking, if you eat in a restaurant, you can validate it and get free parking just by punching in a code. But we don't know how to do this because the point person, I said, who is your point person for the development of these meters? And they said, Brian Grant. Well, Brian hasn't been here in two years. So Gene is responsible for maintaining and collecting the money from the meters, which is great. But we do not have, I said, they told us that we do not have anyone here that we can talk to about all the products that are offered. So I would volunteer to Joe. Did Joe leave? <laughs> left. And I told him I was going to do this, and he left. So I would volunteer Joe because he's the engineer and you're paying him how much money every year, you know, he's, to pick up the recycling, you know, get rid of, clean out the garage. I'll go there and clean out the garage for you. Let him work on getting the password and analyzing this meter information because with the password you can go online and you can analyze your revenue. So what's important about analyzing your revenue? I'll tell you. Last night when we said, can't we have a meter holiday so we don't charge for the meters during Thanksgiving to the 1st of, Je of, of January. And oh, we might lose 30,000. Well, we don't know how much we're going to lose because we don't have the information. But if we had the password, we'd know exactly how much we would lose. And then the way you compensate for that is you charge a little bit more in the summer. When you go to the beach, you expect to pay for parking in the summer. So Memorial Day to Labor Day should be a much higher rate than January when nobody's down at the beachfront. I mean, it only makes common sense. So if we had the password and we can analyze that data, then you can see maybe it's 75 cents instead of 50 cents and it makes up for the holiday shopping time. That's it, that's time. Thank you. Okay. The one thing, just to follow up on that briefly, the one thing we did talk about was the chamber having the um, the, the, the meter people that were there last night come in and really reach out to the merchants and, you know, the merchants are kind of our first line, right, and, uh, and, and show them all the capabilities that we do have and kind of do a, uh, a bit of a tutorial. So that was, that, that, that was something that came out of the meeting last night. I, I also think it goes back to your FYI. We need a consultant who's qualified and there's people out there and we're not hiring them. That's wrong. We know so the quicker we do that, the quicker we get out of this mess. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I want to thank everyone who voted for the charge study question. It passed. Excuse me, could you please address the council? <coughs> I would like to address everyone. Yeah, I would like you thank to you. address the council, please. Yes, I will, ma'am. Got a cold. Thank, I would like to thank everyone who um, voted for the question. It passed. And um, it's great to see when people can come together and do something that's good for everyone. When you got the people behind you, it's good. But when you try to go against the will of the people, it's bad. We see that everybody wanted this question. Everybody wanted it. But then you had some who didn't want it. But now that it's over, let's come together for the common cause of this city. And let's be great. Let's be great. I like what y'all doing as a council. I like the questioning that y'all are doing when it comes to issues. It's not that the usual business. Yes, yes, yes. Those days are over with. It's over. Keep doing what y'all doing. And I spoke to Fred earlier about the ordinance that y'all are about to look into with the police officers being flagged. Let's put in that ordinance to hire some of the flagmen that were trained under Lucas. Y'all can do it. And that's a beautiful thing to see city residents 
working in conjunction with police officers and earning a living. Y'all got the opportunity to ball in your court. Cool. Make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. That's a call, send a bill to the right <laughs> 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 you can't have 17 million dollars. I'd like to piggyback on what Wayne said in reference to using people from the city, possibly as flagmen on certain jobs. <coughs> pretty much no brand. Number one, you want to save money <laughs> on the city to strap for fun. Number two, you want to put people to work who are also strapped for money because they have no money. So anything the city can do in conjunction with populists, especially the populists that need to work, I think is positive and it's a no-brainer. Second, Mr. Kelso, okay, I'd like to thank him on behalf of my church, Second Baptist Church, for providing three officers during our, re our revival. They were extremely professional. Oh, <laughs> my daughter. I meant to Mike, call me back. <laughs>
Why do I have to hear that on a daily basis? Something has to be done about the drug sales on the corner of Ridge and Ivy Place and on Ridge Avenue by my house. Thank you. I'd like to comment just briefly on that. The, I don't know if, how many of you are aware of it. Uh, last week, the prosecutor's office, along with the Asbury Park Police Department and the FBI, had a press conference. So there will be an increase of coverage in this area, actually all of Monmouth County, all of Monmouth County. And I'm sure they will be uh, targeting some of the things that go on in the city of Asbury Park. And so we're hoping to see a decrease. It's winter time, and we know that the drugs don't emanate here in Asbury Park. The source comes from outside of Asbury, and this is a distri distri distribution point for them. And so we hope to crack down on that and we'll look at it very, very closely. Hello? I'm Hi, Rita Moran of 8th Avenue. Ivy Place is not the only place that's selling drugs. Every week, every day, we have a fight on 8th and Grand. Maybe not every day, maybe every other day. People double park in Franklin Street. You call the police, it takes too long for them to get there. 8th and Grand is another bad spot where they're selling drugs, 8th and 7th. So it's the whole city, it's not just Ivy Place. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, uh, Fred talked about two ordinances that have to be changed. That's in the administrative code book. Isn't that right, Fred? Yes. Oh, well, that whole book has to be looked at because we had it with the charter study, and it's just not right. There's so many things that are wrong in that book and so many things that are outdated. And if you're going to follow the rules of the administrative code, you better get that up to date. And the other thing, we always have police officers or somebody else trying to sue their own boss here, us taxpayers. Something's got to be done about that. Every night when Steve breeds off the servos, is anybody paying attention to that? That's all the cases in the city. It's very important that you look into that because we're paying a lot of insurance. And the thing of it is, you've got to go back to drug testing too with employees. It's a costly item, but it's well worth it. You have to do drug testing in this city with the employees. And uh, the other thing about uh, those two lawsuits, can we know the amount or not? Yes. Um, <clears throat> the amount is a total of $25,000, part of which is being paid by the New Jersey Intergovernmental Insurance Fund. What's that? That's our GIF. They basically handle all police. Uh, and general civil liability cases on behalf of the city. Uh, who on that? We have a deductible. The New Jersey. Do we have lawyers that do that? That work representing us? Yes. Uh, through the GIF, they assign counsel to represent the city and other representatives of the city who are named as defendants in lawsuits. But we have a deductible. So we pay our fair share on a deductible, and then they pay any amounts that are in excess of the deductible amount. So what's not deductible? Well, in this case, um, the, the total amount is $25,000. That we have to pay? Part of that is being paid by NJIIF. Right. Oh, well, I mean, maybe we ought to change attorneys. I mean, like, we seem to be paying all the time. That's, and there's a case every couple of weeks that comes up. It's not right that they bite the hand that beats them. It's wrong. I mean, I, I don't know what this case is about, but... I guess we could find out after you approve it tonight, if you do approve it. Once the, resolution, it once the resolution is approved, the uh, settlement agreement is an open public document. Oh, okay. Thank you. We no longer have, what we was referring to with the lawyers and she may not realize is that we no longer have an insurance commission. We went into the JIP uh, during the time of the insurance commission, which I served on. We did have our own attorneys. And, uh, it's true. We do get a lot of lawsuits. Well, the problem is, a lot of times it's easier to try to settle it than it is to fight it. My attitude used to be we should fight some of them and say we're not just going to pay you off because I thought it would be worth it. That's the that's the kind of you have. You fight it, you pay more money, you settle it, you get rid of it. Thank you.
evening. Good evening. And over that way. Yeah, this is very good, just like this, right into it. Good evening. Um, I just want to... Name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. Howard Rajkiewicz, Moonstruck Restaurant, 517 Lake Avenue. Um, I just want to bring it, or remind you folks, and bring it to your attention that um, there are quite a few restaurants that are coming in to the town within the next year that you're well aware of. The seating numbers is something that I have issue with. What once was a shoe store, which once was an office, which once was a clothing store and an eyeglass store, are now going to be maxing out uh, fire marshal permitting the, you know, to get the most revenue they can out of it. So you're, you're taking a clothing store and you're putting 750 seats into it, capacity. Where are those people going to park is my issue. They used to be stores where people would come in, you'd have maybe nine people, customers coming into a store, now you have hundreds of people coming into a store that was a store originally. We have to address this, and yes, we do need an expert, but we don't need an expert to do simple arithmetic. We have how many spaces in the central business district? How many seats do we have in the central business district? Movie theaters, restaurants, coffee shops. You count them on the busiest night, not the slowest night, which may be tonight. Arithmetic is all I'm asking the city of Asbury Park to do. I see that we have an assessment that's being revealed. People are opening envelopes, sticker shock, they're freaking out. It's happening already. If the Asbury Park is going to be asking that kind of money for having a shop in this town, the town should be delivering with providing our customers with a adequate comfortable place to come and visit, not a frustrating, infuriating time trying to stick money in a meter in the pouring rain with nothing covering these meters. I'd like to put a meter inside my restaurant to guest com comfort so they would be happy. You know, they're, We have a desk at the front of the restaurant. They're miserable. Yes, I know you have the phone app, but the, we have an older clientele and they're miserable. They come in irate and then we tell them it's an hour wait. So, you know, it's, it's just something that, you know, <laughs> on top of it, you know, you're just doing one part, but they've circled the town, and, you know, I'll say it again and again, but it really was only simple arithmetic. We're allowing all these restaurants in, but I don't see anything on the board for the future as far as parking garages or, make, or even temporary parking on these lots that are open. Put gravel in them for now. So, just please, and I, will you be posting the next time the parking meet, a uh, parking, uh, Authority will be meeting. Is that something that people can sit in on? Okay. It's the first Tuesday of every month. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And also, just if we could please eliminate these signs that say permit parking only or permit parking this side only. It confuses people. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I do want to say that's a good idea. I like that idea of a parking meter inside your restaurant. And, but I would like um, Council Maybe Woman Quinn. Maybe one of the old parking meters we can kind of. Like <laughs> Council Woman Quinn to maybe comment on the parking committee? Um, well, we had a parking meeting last night. I never, it, listen, I, I think we, I hear you loud and clear. I'm going to be bringing back the concerns to the council. We're going to get this on the agenda for the next um, meeting in November, and we're hopefully going to alleviate some of your some, some of the issues that you're having. Um, that sir, I, I certainly don't have anything that we're building a deck yet, but we're in, in conversations. And the parking consultant is really important, certainly to me and, and to the to the committee because what it, it's not just. It's a comprehensive parking plan for the entire city. So it's Moonstruck, it's Cookman, it's Springwood, it's Deal Lake Drive. It's evaluating all the spots we have and seeing if we can do space sharing. And bear with me because I'm, you know, coming up to speed with parking. Um, so having a professional that does this for a living that can ensure that we can uh, appropriately um, get parking for all the people who are coming in the times that they're coming in. So it's, I want I want a professional and I want a really comprehensive plan for the entire city, not right. just the downtown, right. not just Main Street, the entire city. So that's one of our big pushes, and I'm not an expert. I, I want an expert to tell me. That's what I said. Well, we are, just to let you know, we are in negotiation. 
No, sir. We are negotiating to try to get up the parking lot in the downtown. We are negotiating to try to get in the parking lot in the downtown. We've been doing that for a while. Parking garage. Next. Hello. Amigo Madison Avenue. And I guess I have to say ditto. Because I was at the parking commission meeting last night. And uh, my question, one of them is, how do you get something on the agenda here? What is the process that takes place? Because we've been trying, after meeting after meeting, to get in front of you the concept of a parking consultant, as Amy said, because this is a citywide issue. And I hate to be a dead horse, but that seems what we have to do. Um, the frustration of residents who have parking problems, businesses who have parking problems, east side, west side, all around the town. So um, really what I'm saying is you got to get this on the agenda and please figure out a way to get a consultant here so we can get started because this process is going to take a long time. Nothing's going to get solved in the next 90 days. And just to think about putting a parking garage or deck in without it being part of a greater parking process may be money not well spent. So thank you very much. And we'll be on the next city yes. Thank you. I just want to thank John Moore for being a little instrumental in helping us get our light pole and encouraging DPW to put it in as fast as they did. I also wanted to find out if uh, Ellen Muller and I composed an email, and I just wanted to make sure that you all did receive it. No? Yes. Was it a forward? Yes. It was a forward of an email from next door. No. No, it was one, it was the second paragraph was a reply from Joe and Red. Yes. We got it yes. Well, I just want to say that uh, the number two in that email should have included um, the landscaping on the medians on 6th and 7th Avenue, and our number three, not was left out, uh, after bamboozle, our landscaping was never replaced as it was supposed to be. And our, the other thing that was not included in the email was Sixth Avenue, when we purchased seven years ago. On the approved plan, it said it was a two-way street. It turned out to be a parking lot for the Berkeley at this point. Sure. I came out of the garage the other day <clears throat> and a car came down the street the wrong way. So there is a safety issue here because when there are large events in the city, they come down the wrong way all the time. And we come out of the garage and there's going to be an accident. But my question is, I think John and Sue uh, were on the council at the time, four years ago. I was told that that was approved by the council four years ago to give the Berkeley the parking lot on 6. That wasn't approved by us. That was approved a long time ago. That was, that was so many years ago, we never approved that. Yeah. That was in the 80s. That was a deal made with Berkeley because they didn't have parking for them. When we moved in, it had not been approved for a parking lot. Was always it was always uh, It's been a parking lot. It was supposed to be a two-way street. Yeah. We closed that street. We like it to be here. We tried to get it back open, but that's part of the So in other words, when the developer... This is where you're going back 30 years. No, 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 no. When we bought, and that was seven years ago, the plan was approved by the planning board, and it showed a two-way street on 6th Avenue. That's what they wanted to get. That was, that was the plan they wanted. It was, a, it was also about us getting that street back, which we were not able to do. But yes, we would like that to be 
once again the street. Absolutely. Do you think it'll ever happen? No. Well, it's, not. It's, not. it's possible. <laughs> well, I wish you would all work on it. <laughs> uh, before you leave tonight, I want you to use my new business card or my updated card. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Hello, Mayor and Councilor Grace Van on Long Way. Um, first of all, I want to say I'm glad that the Charter Commission question passed, and you guys got a lot in a new government, a new city manager, a lot of work. But I came to ask something of you. If the tax rate is going to be 9% this year, means we're about 1% higher than other towns, when are we going to have the budget committee started so they can be the grassroots for you guys, and they can also be the fall guy when something's wrong, when you have to give a, an assessment to a, a new building, you can say, well, the budget committee said it, we're only following their advice. That way, it takes one layer of blame off you guys, but i like to see that started as soon as possible. Now, the other thing is, when the ladies were talking about drug dealers, we also need to report every time there's a street light out, and it should take three weeks for it to get fixed, because drug dealers, drug dealers are like roaches. They don't like light. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> and just, just, to, just to make a statement, the tax rate is mostly going to be 9%, because of the increase of the renewables from four, four, four fifty million to $1.2 billion, the tax rate should be coming down. And that's just simple real estate Okay, that sounds good, but I'm just saying we need the budget committee as soon as possible. Right. Thank you
We urge all of you to be there. I know that the mayor and the councilmen will be there, council people will be there. We urge you to be there. And after that short ceremony, we invite all of you back to the post for a reception and for another important tribute. And that is to our firemen, our firefighter, and the law enforcement officer of the year. We invite all of you. We have a moral obligation to be there to recognize our veterans and our men in uniform here at home protecting our safety. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. 